in some some cases it's very difficult to prove uh, what had happened but it's it's i think it's what they are doing in this particular case they just showing that okay we would like to do something more than just to dismiss it at an early stage but then due to the shoddy police work the case goes on like this they yeah. should have understood yeah. from very early on it's something very strange with Anna Adin's story and then she should have been questioned about in detail what happened and they should have then then they would have found out that it was, it's it's something weird and and coming back to this thing we talked about earlier if anna had been properly interviewed she would not have been interviewed over the phone she would have been asked to come into the police station and the police should have video recorded her, the, the whole interview and then she could, you could see what her reaction was to the questions Exactly. And, and if, if an investigator would have asked slightly more questions uh, about uh, what actually had happened, you could see that she was making the story up. You used the word propaganda um, when you talked about... I wonder if we could just move on to the circumstance of um, <clears throat> we've been going about an hour uh, now. And I was just thinking that maybe a, a quick discussion on Klaus Borgström's um, uh, involvement in this matter and also the, um, the prosecutor... Uh, uh, Marion Nye. Perhaps Goran could, could uh, give us a quick rundown on that. Okay. Uh, Klaus Borstrom got involved in on Sunday or, or Monday. Uh, let's see, Sunday, that's 22nd of September. I don't know. Nobody has actually said how it happened. But Anna and Klaus probably got talked about it and he decided he would become uh, the, the uh, complainant's counsel for Anna and the other girl. What he did as counsel immediately was just trying to bring up the fact that, okay, these two girls were sexually assaulted and there must be some type of crime here. And what he did immediately when Eva Finea, she threw out the case about rape against Sophia. Oh, sorry. Uh, the rape accusation from Sophia was dismissed. Klaus Borstrom appealed that decision. Uh, and as appeals normally happen, you ask the prosecutor that made the decision, do you stick to your decision? And then Eva Finia said, yes, I stick to my decision. Then it's brought up to, to the next level. It is Marianne Nui that comes in. Marianne Nui is in charge of something which is called Utvecklings Centrum, Development Centers. Uh, it's the appeal level when you're appealing a prosecutor decision. She decided then to reopen the case. So that, that's its normal procedure. It's nothing about it. And, and, and Julian's defense team has tried to make something out that a politician, Klaus Borstrom is a politician. A politician got involved and it's some strange things happening and it went to Gothenburg. That's exactly where Marianne Nui's office is. But it was, it was completely according to the law. It was done to the book. Klaus Borstrom is an interesting character because she, as I said, he's a politician and he has been the gender equality spokesperson for the Social Democratic Party. He was campaigning uh, for the Social Democrats around this time because there was a general election on the 19th of September. And to me, if you're, actually, if you're actually campaigning for a political party, if so the Social Democrats had had a favorable outcome of the election, Klaus Borstrom would have been sitting in the cabinet. You cannot, as a future cabinet member, take on a case like this. Because people will connect it to your position. I mean, even if there isn't a connection, people will assume there is a connection. And if Klaus Borstrom would have become a member of the part, uh, the cabinet, he would have had to drop the case and leave it to somebody else. So it's, it's bad judgment from Klaus Borstrom and it's bad judgment from the Social Democrats to allow Klaus Borstrom to get involved in the case. That, that leads to the other aspect yeah. too. Um, I'll just let you finish and then I'll, I'll there's just a bit, I, I just want to carry that on to the lay judges because they're politically appointed as well. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, but but Klaus Bornstrom's in, his involvement actually confuses Julian's defense so much. It's not true, and and uh, he shouldn't have been involved. Klaus Bornstrom is important from an, from another point of view. Uh, he lost lots of credibility in in a in a serial murder case. He actually helped the prosecutor to convict a mentally insane man of seven murders. Uh, he had, Klaus Borstrom has been heavily criticized for his involvement in that. And I think Klaus Borstrom took on this case to try to regain some of his credibility. So he has a motive, of, he has an agenda of his own. So, so he wants to make sure that this case goes on and on and on. Unfortunately, he has jumped on the wrong uh, on the wrong case. Right. He's just, yeah, he's, he has been involved in actually helping the prosecutor convict an innocent man of seven murders. Now he's trying to help the prosecutor convict somebody who's not guilty of rape. It's just, right. just fun. Just leading on to the, the lay judges, they're also politically appointed. And there was a survey that was done, I, I forget the name of it, but it came out with some statistics of what those um, um, appointed lay judges think about their job. And I think the figure was something about 50% of them responded to the um, uh, request for their opinions. 50% of them or, or more said that their judgments would reflect their party political viewpoints. And, and that to me was ast is astounding because Law is law, and politics is politics, and should be separate. And they're yeah. deciding cases on the basis of politics instead of on I, law. Yeah, Peter, I would, I, I wouldn't, I, I don't think that's true. I do not think that's true. But uh, anyway, I think, I think it's, it's, it's really sad that we have lay judges and that they are appointed from political parties. It seems like the whole, I don't know why we have it. I prefer a system when you have a jury. I mean, you should be judged by uh, your peers. Your peers. Yeah. Because, because it gives you an idea about, normally that would mean that this is how people perceive the law. I mean, so, so it's actually, it, it's just fairness to me. Uh, let 12 people say what, they, what their opinion is of what I've done. With this situation, we have lay judges. It, it's a simple, it's a simple thing, uh, because you can. It doesn't take time to to appoint uh, a jury. It's quick and it's efficient, and I think it's. I mean, to me, it's a system. It's just a way of giving, not very, uh, not very, not very successful politician a means of income. That's why Could I think it's just, bad. Yeah. And I don't think jobs, and, 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 jobs for and the I, boys. Pardon? Jobs for the boys. Yes, yes. And I think uh, in many cases they are incompetent. But uh, but I wouldn't. I would not assume that they make their judgment based on, on their politics. I think they make they make their judgments from from their from their own uh, ideas. And, and I have seen some cases where they've they've decided that a person. Um, is guilty of a serious offence, but because they really think that maybe he's not guilty, they just give them a small fine or something like that. Does that happen? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, it is. It is. It's a bad. It's a bad system, and it it has negative effects. And I think uh, that is one. I think Julian's defence team has a valid criticism there. The the mm. the system with lay judges, it's not a very good system. Uh, that should that should that should go away. Yeah. Um, do you have any questions, Alexa? At this no, time? I'm I, sorry. I, we've been no, we've no. Been don't don't apologize. You. It's actually it's actually really really good. Um, I I think we're we, we should probably wrap it up. I think we really covered. Everything. Yeah, I think I think we're just about got there. Unless somebody's got some quick questions they want to uh, pass back and forth. Did you uh, did you cover? Uh, I know one of the important ideas you have the description by police of the crime. No, I, I wrote notes prior to our interview. Um, 
and, and uh, I think I, I, I thought that somebody had brought up a description by the police of the crime, but maybe that was actually just, we've already covered that. Um, I think we're good. Yep. Okay, I, I, one thing. A, we've talked about this issue about want and consent. Can I give you an example? I mean, uh, I know it's yes. night for you and, and you start to look no, tired. No, 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 go uh, ahead, go ahead. Yeah, but... Uh, it's Alexa, Alexa it's tired. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, that, uh, that's, I'm trying to, I'm looking at Alexa and I'm trying to talk to Alexa. Uh, to me, you seem to be an intelligent woman and you're very attractive. If you would ask me if I wanted to go to the movies with you, I would think about it a short period of time and say, mm, I'd like to meet you, but I don't particularly fancy to go to the movies. So I, sa I would say yes. And we go off to the movies and whatever happens, happens. If somebody would ask me afterwards, did you really want to go to the movies with Alexa? I would say no. But why did you go to the movies? I, say, I consented to go to the movies, but I never wanted, I wanted to meet Alexa. I didn't want to go to the movies. And it's, it's the same thing here. I mean, you have to, what you actually consent to do is something completely different to what you want to do. So I, I think there are many cases that I can talk about similar situations, but it's very important that people don't understand this in this country. There is a difference between wants and consent. Okay? I, I think that's a good note to end it on. I think so too. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Um, I will let you know when this is up. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. Pleasure. Thank you. Switch it Thank up you. and then and just make sure that you've got what you've got. Yeah.